Kiwis want to get kids voting. New Zealand's highest court has ruled the current voting age of 18 is discriminatory. Politicians are now going to have to make a call on whether 16-year-olds are allowed to cast a ballot, which will open the door to a class action from 15-year-olds. <laughs> I have rights to, you know. Jacinda Ardern supports the move, but she needs to get three-quarters of the parliament over the line to change electoral laws. 16 is the line in the sand because that's the point at which New Zealand's Bill of Rights says you should be free from all forms of age discrimination. Change your name to McLovin? <laughs> Plus, there are practical considerations. You're trusted to drive a car and you're forced to pay tax if you work, so why shouldn't you be allowed to vote? No taxation without representation. That's why Mel Gibson started the American War of Independence. Am I angry about taxation without representation? Well, yes, I am. So you think it's a good idea? I don't think a person's age should determine their right to vote. I think a person's IQ should determine a person's right to vote. Exhibit A in this argument is Forest Hill teenager Blake McFarlane. This 16-year-old runs a business that provides over 1,000 chooks and over 400 dozen eggs every week to Mount Barker, Albany and Denmark. Blake's chooks and eggs can feed the Great Southern and win the West Australian of the Year Small Business Award, but the guy running it can't be trusted to vote. Exhibit B is David Neil Clark. Dave's a one-time insurance broker who counted one-time security guard slash cleaning company owner Arash Ibrahimi Farr as a client. Arash is better known as the kid and police say his business is better known as an international drug trafficking operation. Dave's world collided with Arash's when Dave lost his job in insurance and reinvented himself as a self-help guru running something called the Action System. The Action System's 10-point plan is designed to help people go further. In Dave's case, further into police custody after he helped the kid's partner, a professional eyelash extension technician named Carolyn Hart Preto, to launder 20 grand. Judge Mara Baroni said Dave's finance background should have made him suspicious when Kaza asked him to distribute the 20 large between three separate bank accounts to ensure he didn't trigger an Austrac notice. Also, that he should have known something wasn't quite right when Carolyn gave him those instructions, not in his office, but in a car park. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Dave is clearly a moron, and Blake is clearly not. Who would you say better deserves the right to be part of our democracy? Got to wonder if it's worth voting at the mm, moment. The Corruption and Crime Commission investigation into the WA Labor Party gets... Curiouser and curiouser. A day after we found out the Triple C was looking into whether electorate staffers were being trained as ALP campaign activists, it's emerged that electorate staffers were being trained as ALP campaign activists. Now I'm advised the training is entirely appropriate. Despite electorate office guidelines making it expressly clear that publicly funded workers at electorate offices cannot campaign for politicians, the ALP was organising training sessions which appear to have the expressly clear purpose of teaching electorate officers how to campaign for politicians. Seems pretty blatant. It's been reported there was a two-hour session during work hours last Tuesday. That was held after the Triple C started demanding documents from ALP headquarters and Labor parliamentarians. I also like to live dangerously. And Mark McGowan is still channelling Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing. <laughs> The Premier says he still has no clue about a Triple C investigation, even though it's subject of endless Labor crisis meetings as we speak. And he says that even if electorate staff were being trained in campaign techniques, that's fine because their job is very broad. Like, like your job, where you write your story and you put it in the paper each day and you go and do it again the next day, it's very, very broad. So there's nothing to see here. I was not here. I did not even get up this morning. Well, if the Premier doesn't know anything, who does? Maybe someone who was a strategic director to the Premier of Western Australia, who took that job after being strategic advisor to the Premier of Western Australia during the 2021 election. An election the Triple C suspects ALP electorate staff were campaigning in, in breach of parliamentary guidelines. It could be someone who was the communications director of the WA Labor Party during the 2017 election. Another election the Triple C suspects ALP electorate staff were campaigning in, in breach of parliamentary guidelines. That person, a very nice chap named Mark Reid, might know a thing or two about what went on. Very interesting. Mark's no longer a public servant. He recently discovered a thing called money with which you can buy stuff, so he went to the private sector as a lobbyist. And we all know how much the Triple C loves them. I'm Ben Harvey.
If anyone knows how to murder someone and get away with it, it would have been him. He was a animal. You believe Gary White is an innocent man? 100%.